today we are looking at uh, satellite applications. We have looked at the orbits. Um, we've looked at the satellites that are in orbit. <clears throat> I'm talking about Intelsat's ones now. We have looked at what is a space mission, the concept. We have looked at, uh, you know, we've gone through a little bit of oh, what a satellite is made up of, you know, basically the payload, the platform. So I think we have enough to be more practical downstream. Downstream meaning upstream is the, the hardware, the technology, the satellites, the, the, the stuff we send to space to collect data. Then the data is sent down to earth. And then we start with what happens downstream. We utilize this data. And Today, we want to look at applications. So basically, what can you do with this data? Now, the European Space Agency, alongside some other space agencies, have launched some satellites. And among all these satellites, there are some that have they decide that they decided to use in a way that they will make the data available to whoever wants it right and this particular dashboard or this website i sent you this link so you have it already is one that allows you to access and exploit this freely available data. There is commercial data available too. Basically you buy and then you utilize. Today, I just want to show you this particular one because it can be very useful already today. You know, um, if you're looking for, for some satellite data for whatever reason, I hope by the time I'm done today, I'll take just one or two examples to illustrate how you can access satellite data and how you can get some meaning out of said satellite data. Does, does this sound like something interesting to do today? What do you think? I think it does, yes. Okay, beautiful. You know, anybody? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think it seems very interesting to go over. I'm so sorry. One quick thing I just wanted to mention. Um, I didn't quite see it. It might be an error on my part. But have you been able to send out the um, outline for what workshops we'll be doing yet? Yes, I did. Okay, anyway, sorry. I sent I sent it to uh, Emmanuel. He's supposed to have sent it to you guys. Okay, I'll just have another check to see if I didn't miss it. And one last thing, I um missed something you were saying on part of upstream and downstream. Do you mind possibly just explaining those two concepts again? No problem at all. <clears throat> upstream i mean when it comes to when it comes to the space sector space industry and by industry i mean there is a uh, um, there is creation of value that can be commercialized yeah at scale now upstream here has to do with the easy way to think about it is to think of the direction up. So, and, and that's just a gimmick to, to remember, no? It's conceptually, it's broader than that. 
upstream is everything that goes to space to collect the data, the satellite, the, the, the technology, the engineering, everything that you do that has to do with the spacecraft itself going into orbit to collect data. This data is sent to Earth and then begins everything downstream. Downstream starts with the data, the utilization of the data and inferring, you know, uh, extracting intelligence from this data is everything that happens downstream. It is, for example, the creation of this particular platform that allows people like me, like you, to access this data, to analyze it, and for this data to then help you to make decisions. So that's downstream. You have different applications that people can build around creating value, adding value to this data and commercializing it or maybe making it available to some party or the other. Uh, does that answer the question? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so I, I was asking if anybody before today had has had any experience with actually accessing satellite data I mean the in a sort of way I personally have in the sense that um you know slow scan television yeah uh, have you heard of that yeah so um what I've done with my father before is the ISS from the Russian module sometimes sends down these broadcasts for slow scan television like QSL cards and my father and I once actually picked up one so I guess if that you could kind of call that receiving data from a satellite in a sense and then also the tiny yeah, GS you know, does send data packets, which I was just going to, to say, you know, <laughs> the, the tiny GS is a is this straightforward one, and and you're actually building it to to receive satellite data. So, um, well, this is going to be interesting then. Uh, and this one thing we're going to talk about today. The other thing I want to share with you guys today is there is a satellite launch that will be happening in, I hope you can see my screen, in 25 minutes and some seconds, right? Transporter 9. And on this, this launch or this rocket, there are a number of nano satellites. One of them is quite an anticipated one uh, from Djibouti, Djibouti Sat 1. I think it's Djibouti 1A or something. I, I forgot the technical name they gave it. But on, on here in about, uh, in about 24 minutes and some change, there's going to be a quite something to see. Interestingly enough, as I speak right now, they are sitting at the Montpellier University Space Center where they built and and uh, they, where they designed and built the satellites. The, the Djibouti students who went there got trained and became engineers and built their country's first satellite and uh, sent it over for SpaceX to launch it. And, and here it is, it's about to be launched. So this is one more African satellite about to go to space. I don't know if Senegal's first satellite is also on board. I suspect it is, but if it's not, then at least we know Djibouti's one is on there. Now, I don't know how exciting that is for you guys, but I was there a few months ago I was in the clean room, I saw the satellite and the guys working on it. And yeah, it does make, it does have some tingly feeling for me, you know, to know it's going to space today. I know the guys are going to cry. It's inevitable. You spend months working on a satellite, you know, you won't see it again. When I say months, I mean, I mean, these guys have been at it 
move uh, over a year, a year and some change. And they are going to, well, they have said their goodbye some time ago, but to see it go to space in, in about 20 and some minutes, uh, that's quite something. Do you guys want to have this this link so you can uh, you can check it out? Or if we're not done by the time it's it's time to launch, maybe we can watch it together. How's how's that for a plan? That seems good with me personally. Yeah, sure. Okay, let me. Um, how do I do that now? How do I do that? Okay. So I'm going to put this link here. Oh. Okay. I don't know if it's sent. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Um, the group chat send. There you go. And if I click on watch online, I think it's going to open. Oh, they changed the URL. This broadcast is ended. Let's see, watch online. This arrow says, okay, I can watch it on X or on YouTube. Okay, they haven't started streaming yet, but if you can see my screen, there's already quite some activity in the YouTube channel chatbots. SpaceX's launches are always quite something. So I'll send also the YouTube channel on the on the chat. There you go. <clears throat> I I have my I have high hopes that it's going to be successful and that Djibouti will have its first satellite and everybody will be singing Kumbaya and things like that. Okay. Let's look at this website, Sentinel Hub. Uh you have it in your emails. I'm going to show you real quick what you can do with this. So first, when you open this site, uh, you're going to see, well, you look at this button that says start exploring. You click on it and start exploring. In the email, I sent you also a YouTube links so you can, you can look at uh, some tutorials. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the interface that opens when you click on Start Exploring. Um, the YouTube tutorial will take you through some more details, but I'll just show you the some key points, okay? Right, so if you look at this on the left, you have a menu. You have a menu. Um, there is there are a few tabs. Yeah, search data first. You have the discover tab. You have a visualize tab. Compare and things. Right. So we're going to be hovering between discover and visualize because uh, compare comes after. Different first. Um, in the Discover tab, you have further tabs. You have <clears throat> search, you have commercial data. Uh, it tells you how to acquire commercial data. You have highlights, which there isn't at the moment. Um, well, we have to pick a theme. It says here has no highlights. And what are themes? What are you interested in? What are you looking for? 
Are you looking for something that has to do with agriculture? Are you into atmosphere and air pollution? Uh, change detection through time? You know, what, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? So if I go for agriculture, you know, just for argument's sake, suddenly you see some highlights appearing here. You have some highlights, some images you get from different places on earth. If I look at uh, change the detection through time, you have some changes that have, you know, are, um, where are we? That are uh, selected for you. Um, I won't go there yet because I want you to look at what happens in the search here. So for, for this particular demo, let us assume that, I mean, you will all agree that agriculture is a good one to look for, no? Let's say agriculture. Um, which means that we are interested in data for the agriculture vertical. So our use case would be in agriculture. Could be anything, we're trying to, to understand how plants are, how vegetation is organized. Uh, where, um, what are the stress levels in the plants, things like this, you know, to optimize what we call precision agriculture. So let's look at agriculture. In fact, uh, let's go with default because I want you to first see that in this search, all of these are satellites, okay? These are satellites you have here or some standardized process data from satellites, but Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, Sentinel-3, Sentinel-5P, and so on. These are actually, all right, so you have this little question mark thing if you hear. So Sentinel-1 provides uh, all weather, day and night, radar imagery for land and ocean. Earth observation browser provides data acquired from that. That tells you what's the pixel spacing, revisit time, five days using both satellites. Visit time, uh, you have data availability. So you've have data is available since October, 2014. Common usage, maritime, land monitoring, emergency response, climate change. So this, that's Sentinel-1, okay? Um, Sentinel-2, special resolution, 10 meters, 20 meters, 60 meters, depending on the wavelength, that, 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 that gives you all the information about the, the satellite, Credit Copernicus. Copernicus is the project that puts all this data, that makes all this data available, okay? You have this advanced search thing. So basically here, you, you, if you want to see data from Sentinel-1 as well as Sentinel-2, you basically pick your data sources. So you select which satellite you want data from. We'll stick with the default that says Sentinel-2, okay? Uh, now let's look at one use case. I just want to get something, I don't know, urban, uh, because it shows more than one satellite. Agriculture will basically show you Sentinel-2 because that's the satellite that's most used for agriculture uh, use cases. Let's go with advanced search. Uh, maximum cloud coverage. Standard value for acceptable commercial data is 20%. What does it mean? It means that if I have images where the cloud coverage is more than 20%, these images are probably not of any use. So I'll set the limit there. When I say standard commercial limit, it means if you're trying to buy images, typically, if you want cloud coverage that is less than, if you want to shift the threshold to below 20%, you may pay a bit more. But while this data is free and, and you're allowed to do it, so. Um, time range. You see here from the 11th of October, 2023 to the 11th of November, 2023. So we're going to be looking at data with the focus on agriculture from this date to this date coming from Sentinel-2. All right, 
Where do we want to check this out? Somebody give me a place. Somebody, anybody, some place, maybe near their, their, maybe your city, something, something somewhere. Tell me. Joss. Where? Uh, Saint Helena. <laughs> Somebody spell something. I think I'll need the spelling. Uh, J O S. J O S. J O S. Joss. Now, where is Joss? Where is that? It's not showing me something. Uh, for Saint it's... Lena, you can spell it um, S T for Saint, and uh -huh. then space um, H E L H E L E. There, Saint Lena. Saint Lena, where is that? It's Saint Helena, the coast South Africa. of the Ivory Coast. Oh, uh, um, not quite. I was thinking maybe Saint the Helena, island. Tristan. Yes, that South one. Carolina. Saint Helena, Ascension, and Tristan de Cunha. This one. Yes, I believe oh. so. Well, let's go there. Does that about sound right? Yes. Okay. So. Saint Helena, with all that nice details, we're looking for this data from this satellite, from this date to that date, search. No products found, oh my goodness. Now, I don't know if it, the place is too far out way to where, I don't know why I don't find data for there. Maybe the date range, let's say I start, in January, let's see. There you go. It just didn't have anything for the past month, but definitely has something starting in January. So you see data starts showing up. I'm just zooming out here. And uh, you're going to see the percentage cloud coverage you have the date, percentage, cloud coverage, the time, okay? Uh, you have 19, 18, 2. 2, that's not bad. Um, 2.7, 18, 3. Let's look at the least, the smallest percentage cloud coverage here. It starts from the earliest one to the oldest one. 2.9, 12, 13, 4, 13. I'm just looking for the one with the least cloud coverage, just so we'll have, we can see a lot, right? 1.6, that seems like a good one. Let's, let's try it. And then you click on visualize. And what happens, you have a satellite image from, April, 16th of April of St. Helena. You can see that there's still quite some cloud coverage, yeah? Uh, I want to try, no, I need layers for that. No, the compare, you'll see how this is actually really cool. You're going to see it in the... So here you have different... Um, Indices you can look at. NDVI is going to show you the vegetation index. And if you open it, it tells you what this index indicates. When you look at the different colors, you have a sense of what it's showing you. All right. Uh, minus one to one negative values uh correspond to water and when you look at minus one to zero here uh you can have a sense of where is water all over here is water right and going up you start looking at different types of vegetations and it also 
there's more you can do with this. It gives you even some information of how healthy are the plants, where it's there, you know. Um, and closer to one, when you start approaching one, uh, high values indicate temperate and tropical rainforests. Some So according to this, it would correspond to these areas here. Yeah. So if we go to true color, does it make sense? Are we in the real? Yeah. Maybe besides the clouds. So let's go back to discover. So in discover, we look at these images and then we come and visualize, see what, what comes out of there. Uh, let's see, 2.7. Ooh, still quite covered. Are we getting a bit of a sense of what how you can use this thing? Yes. Is it interesting? Are you liking what you're seeing? Very interesting, yeah. Very interesting. Shall we? Okay, let's see how far is this launch. Seven minutes away. Yay. Okay. Anybody wants to propose another place to check out? Svalbard. No, you already proposed the place. Someone <laughs> else is going to propose a place. <laughs> Abuja. Spell that for me. A B U. A B U. J A. J A. Abuja, Nigeria. Is that the one? Yes. There we go. Abuja, Nigeria. It's saying Abuja here. Is it? Is it some? Is it uh, state versus city or something like that? City, city. So city is Abuja the state? The city, city. Okay. Well, here we are. We're going to go to discover, back to search. Let's search. Let's see. We probably have something here that started a bit later let's uh, say september search ah there is quite some data hmm. interesting 2.6 percent this one seems clear doesn't it not 0.9 percent let's visualize this ah So you have recent images of Abuja. Do you see the scale down here? 500 meters. This is uh, the 8th of November, not too long ago. Let's see, if you're looking for, I think you can ask to see different things here. You can zoom in, in a, well, with this, you can make a polygon, you can draw lines and actually extract data from these places, all right? Uh, but I'll, I just want to, to catch your attention long enough that you decide that you're going to go and dig further and actually start exploring and seeing. Um, I don't know who proposed Abuja, but this looks like it is some some feature, some place that is easily recognizable. What does, What is this place? It must ring a bell to you, I'm sure. I see here Unity Road, Shew, Chagari Way, Hospital Road, etc. etc. It's not so clear because of the resolution. It's 10 meter, 20 meter, and so on resolution. It's so okay. There's the, if you want clearer images, you would probably have to buy commercial commercial uh, images to have something of higher resolution, right? But essentially, this this is one part of what you can do with this. A lot of it is free. A lot of the analysis you can do for free. I do hope that this has shown you some of what you can do in terms of satellite applications. Right now, we're just looking at images, but you can actually 
analyze, you can you can uh, look for barren soil, for example, here. They also explain to you what the colors mean. So can visualize useful soil mapping the vegetation of non-vegetated areas. Visualization shows all vegetation in green and the barren ground in red. Water appears black. So is it precise? Is it the, the best? Does it make sense to you as you're analyzing? Is it real? Is it not real? Moisture index. Here you have again, <clears throat> a normalized differential moisture index. You have a scale and it explains to you what does it mean red? What does it mean blue? With this, you look at a place and then you make some decisions. You can you can actually even plot some of these uh, some of these um, parameters over time. Agriculture composite also gives you some information about that. So that's a lot you can start building with this. Um, let's see how far are we? One minute. Do you want to take a look at uh, what's going on here? Oh, they have started the lift off in 14 minutes. Interesting. I hope they show us. While waiting for it to start. So this, this is the example I wanted to show you because I could I could have gone through all the pain of using some of the GIS systems, but I, I thought an online platform that is uh, free to use that you can access and actually play around with would be more useful, right? Okay. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions. Do you have any questions? Yeah, no? I just want to cut the sound here first. Anybody? <laughs> Guys, you won't believe what I just received on my phone. Do you want to know what I just received on my phone? <laughs> yeah. A picture of the whole group, at least the, the projection screen on the um at the university at the Montpellier University Space Center, as everyone is waiting for liftoff. Now these guys are saying lift up in 12 minutes. It's supposed to be live and I'm not seeing anything. Let's see if they show it on Twitter. Are they broadcasting this here? Let's reload. Yeah, this seems to work. Oh, it's already gone. Do you see it? That's it going to space. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, see it. Yeah, we can see it. We can. It's crazy. It's it's live. You know. I think these workshops are just awesome. Look at that. T plus one minute, 
So we talk about it, we, we, we have lectures about it, we have workshops, and then this is the actual stuff happening. Can you hear the sound from my computer? No. No. Because they, they have a, a live, uh, they're reporting, I hope you can hear. That's main engine cut off, Miko. You have all these different stages. And then, um, and that first stage is going to land. This is absolutely crazy. Yeah, it's incredible. No. Sorry, separation. Guys, are you there? Are you seeing this? Yeah, I was seeing it. When you hear nominal trajectories, it's it's basic. It's mean nominal here means normal, so as planned. All right. Crazy. Interesting. Declan, you were asking about upstream. All of all of what's happening here is really upstream. It's all related to upstream, sending the hardware up to space. And entry burn.
just enough to get it to the right speed or oh, right velocity. Yep. The fact that these things keep landing is just amazing. Landing burn. Look at that. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. Are you guys still there? Uh, yes. 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 So you have the... Um... I send the URLs, you can come back and see, especially the payload deployment, because then you see how these satellites are being released into orbit and you're seeing it live. It's, it's crazy. All right. So we had an interesting bonus today. We looked at how you can exploit satellite data, access it, exploit it. Um, you have a, uh, a video, um, a link to YouTube video that will guide you through some detailed tutorials. And you got to, to watch the launch of the, of a Falcon 9 going to space with a uh, transporter 9. Oh yeah, it was with Falcon 9 uh, boosters. Going to space with at least one African CubeSat. I think today was quite an interesting workshop. 